do anything offensive. Witch Doctor, at least. You have level 6, you have a chance of killing somebody or setting up a kill, but all Rubik could do is just lift the Lycan and let slowly the creeps of kill him. There wasn't a way to stop it. That's, and I, I saw them, what, they banned the Witch Doctor in the first three too, mm -hmm. right? So that's like, yeah, you know, that's, that that's well. kind of a telltale thing that Liquid's really looking at them and being like, alright, fly, we'll put you to the test. What, are you gonna, what hero are you going to take for yourself now? Bands about to income uh, for both teams. We get into our second draft. I want to highlight too, like in that last game, I think the item adjustment from Miracle did not go for like a standard build for him to go for the Shadow Blade. I think that was a pretty game winning. Read. It was it was critical, really wasn't it, it at times? Fogden and I were watching it. Just movement around the map and just being able to come up behind a player and surprise someone. It, it initiated so many fights, didn't it? It's so good against Chen and Rubik that are under farm because yeah. you can just hit the back line, find the stragglers. Those guys can't defend themselves very well, especially against an Orchid. Yeah, like, I think there was, there was like one kill where he got caught out, where it was an obvious bait, where Rubik went off. I don't know where he was going, but it, it was an obvious bait and Miracle came in, and then they gave the kill to Rezo. But other than that, it was really effective, wasn't it? Yeah, it tore up the back lines every time. Mm. There was, I think, like three times in mid where they started pushing down mid, and he just waited for he did. the straggler. Like the last like, one yeah. at the end. <laughs> so I'm going to kill you. <laughs> it was really annoying. And it often led to a team fight after that as well, didn't it? Yes. I love seeing those un the unorthodox builds just working out like that. Beautiful. But this time, OG, they got the first pick. So we're going to see kind of completely different stuff around. I don't think you give up Tiny either. We didn't really talk too much about my control in that game, but this presence that the hero gives you, he just does so much. Being able to burst heroes in fights, massive amount of control. He was like always there at the right time to like combo the core yep. that was vulnerable, basically, and then set up a kill. Like a lot of storm kills that way. Uh, so... Tusk, Tiny, Io, and Bottle Bane. Tusk this time. Oh. That one was not banned, right? It's a Chen ban for OG. OG's turn to pick. Last game that was Gyro by Liquid in the first phase. It was, yeah. And uh, no Witch Doctor ban. So Razor's through this time. Oh, Miracle's got an idea. <laughs> He's like, oh, Terrorblade first two, Terrorblade first two, they picked Razor. He beat me up, fam. Is it really safe to do it this early, though? Oh, uh, Miracle seems to think so. I mean, I mean we don't know exactly what he's saying, about, uh, about Yeah, I got him! Say, I was like, but they would just pick Elder Titan against it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. ETTV. You could see the spark but in you his eyes. You can see it, dude. You I got know, these guys. You know, when you see Razor, I actually think this is just... It's the best hero yeah. versus Razor, period. That was so funny, though, because you guys so saw, excited. I knew it, dude. I knew it. He's like, guys, I know this. <laughs> but that's the cool thing, too, is like a drafter that you trust your core player to make yeah. that kind of call. Yeah. There was, um, at... What was it, Star Ladder? They actually let Miracle draft a few of the games because I asked Mo, their manager about it. I was like, why did why was Miracle drafting? He's like, because I want him to also understand and see the process. Exactly. And, through. and so he's like, yeah. you'll have good ideas too when I can't because Kuros is like, I'm not infallible. I can't sure. see everything. And so it's important that my core player especially understands. He didn't yeah. let anybody else. He was... Sure. I mean, it's, it's, I, I, I see there are many teams. I know one person is pressing the key, but... There are multiple drafters in most good teams when you look at them. I mean, even look at EG. I mean, they've got Crit being a drafter, Beer being a drafter. They've got a drafter in the team in Misery that's come in, but there's more than that, right? And Bulba. And Bulba in the background. So they've got four drafters, effectively, all talking about the game. Yeah. I think the way that it goes on that team is like, Misery is the voice of God. He's like, yeah. this is what we're going to do. And then Bulba will contribute. And for the most part, I, I think the important thing, though, is you don't have too many cooks in the kitchen. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not saying that you do. I'm saying that you have the experience oh, there okay. if you need it. You know, if, yeah. you, if you're having a bad draft day, like Fly, you know, if he's having a bad day, sure, great. He's got a couple of other people in his, his camp that he can rely on, especially the man sitting on the floor right now, Yeah. Uh, which is mad. No tell, though, is... No tell, also very vocal. Yeah. He always is. But Tinker has long been one of the best ways to deal with Terrorblade. It's not just the laser, which I think a lot of people think of. It's the fact that... When you try to move into the side lanes, Tinker's always there to meet you, so it makes it very difficult to play around. And the fact that after you force your BKB, if you can't get on top of the Tinker, you just straight up die. Two core opener, though. Yeah. yeah. Don't see that very often these days, do we? Although I think the obvious ban would have come in. I think it's semi-safe with Razor anyways. Like, you can just go in any lane. He wins 1v1 matchups, so it's like, you can't really think like, yeah, I'm just going to pick X hero and force that matchup. So I don't, I don't think it's the worst thing for OG. What about, uh, what do you think about, like, uh, for Liquid, 
There's like, you could take Pugna. Oh, they, they got rid of that Ooh. one, yeah. Uh, Omni? Omni, I think Omni is the big difference maker versus me, for me when you have Terra Blade versus uh, yeah. Tinker, that matchup. It, it kind of like sways it a little bit more. That's what Liquid did in the past. It's like, they picked TB into Tinker and they, it was against one of the Chinese teams. I can't honestly remember. But they just, I think it was Vici or LGD. It was LGD, I think. It was LGD, yeah. I'm pretty sure. And then he just yeah. jumps in with Blink Dagger, reflects, and then gets on top of the Tinker with Repel on. I like the Bane as well. It uh, gives them some much needed lockdown to help kill Tinker. Uh, it's also good lane presence. If you're um, picking up any extra noise from the background, I can <laughs> confirm that the two Chinese teams are still going head to head right now. That's Newbie versus LGD, which is on stream two. Or you can stay tuned into us and just listen to them yelling at each other in the background. I'm hearing and I'm like, that's definitely maybe. <laughs> that's definitely maybe. He oh, is he's so loud, right now. He is the, he's one of the loudest players. I love it. They, uh, they are up right now in a 38-minute game, LGD. Nice. So. Oh. Dude, they're getting... It's they're getting, getting progressively loud. louder. Yeah, and it's very close, that game, by the way. The net, the, the net worth right now advantage is LGD by 969 gold. Oh. I <laughs> you can you can really tell that we're in, in. really tell we're in elimination matches. I even heard Liquid get really loud last game. Same yes. thing. I, I love hearing those cool calls. We're actually pretty lucky. We're like sitting here on the panel, and you just hear like, "Get back, get back! I four step, I four step!" Yeah. Yeah. Well, come the to me, come to me. Communications. The cool thing about that is, in the late game on most teams, it's normally the cores that are the most active in talking. Like I know you played support for mm -hmm. the latter half of your career, and for the most part, like you know, you don't you have to kind of trust your cores to like make those calls because they have all the items. Yeah, and you usually lead the early game. But on Liquid, it was. It was almost always Kuro and GH that were calling what to do. Yeah. GH would call out everything. He'd say, like, he has mana. He doesn't have TP. Yep. He was always the first person in. Disruptor. Hmm. I mean, do you take Omni if you're Liquid? I think it's even better now. It's versus Disruptor, too. Because your, your Terra Blade's a bit susceptible yeah. to the, uh, the Static Storm early on. They but take they take their Viper. Spontumba's hero. Yep. Uh, how does that match up against Tinker? The old one used to be really annoying. I feel like it's not as bad now. So you have to deal damage to deal damage. Yeah. The old one, I, I remember I, I was playing in a game. It was like Viper. I had Viper TV or something. And my Tumba man came in and he's like, that's really bad against Tink. Because you can't get on top of him. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. You'll never get a gap close. Maybe you'll get Shadow Blade or something, but... I, I don't know how really how to rate Viper in a lot of 1v1 matchups anymore. Because I used yeah. to be like, oh, Viper's gonna, you know, he's gonna be like that dominator. But now it's like, kind of breaks even with most. Like, other heroes just do better versus him now. I need to play that hero more. Be, Viper? Yeah. I haven't touched... The two heroes that I haven't touched yet that I should are Viper and Tiny. I haven't played Tiny yet. Either. You haven't played Tiny? That hero is ridiculous, too. I think I'll take your word for it. I've seen a few Tiny. <laughs> just a few. It's been okay. It's more like uh, Liquid just plays him and he just kind of sustains in the lane and transitions to whatever build he needs. It's like, it's safe, I would say. It's decent at turning ganks and surviving Will, ganks. Will was saying something earlier about Ooh. the Viper 2 is the, um, the blade mail, right? You can just go blade mail, run into Tinker's stuff, make Tinker not be able to blink out in a lot of the fights. Corrosive as well, pain in the ass versus that's the, for Tinker. That's the, I'm 0-7. Yeah. Screw this game. Get me out. Why am I not being carried? My build? game's miserable. I make your game miserable. I feel like he does get outlaned by Razor, though. The 1v1. Razor there. I guess as long as Razor doesn't tank creeps, I feel like he 100% wins that matchup if he just saps damage and goes back to last hit. Like, there's nothing Viper could actually do. So for Liquid... The Night Stalker is weird, Night's, right? Yeah, that's a, that's a bit of a different one from... Too. I was thinking the same thing. He plays fast against uh, ET, is the one nice thing. He's pretty chaotic on the map, and he, gets, he wins the vision game for Tinker. Which I think is pretty important. Mm -hmm. He's really good against both Bane and ET, really, because yeah. he can find the guys in the back line that are trying to cast important spells and yeah. interrupt them. He's got two ways to do so. Cap used to say that he really liked NS Disruptor, because NS will just run in for you, scout the vision, and he'll almost always win that game for you, and then you just glimpse back every time. A lot of good combos there. I haven't seen a lot of Night Stalker here. I think Mineski's the only team that I saw playing it. Yeah. I mean, they run it for Ninja Boogie all the time. Yeah. It's like a five Night Stalker. Sounds alone against TV is amazing for the first 20 minutes of the game. Prevent Sunder. You need to take uh, for Liquid. They I'm need sure. anti mobility. They ban Arc Warden. So OG still have. Ten that feels like a throwaway ban. The Arc Warden. I feel like Liquid goes like 500 or something. What do they want? 
Just an update on the Night Stalker pick. It's been picked four times so far in the last three days. Hasn't won yet. Hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm weird about that hero because it doesn't contribute with team fight. Sure, he gives yeah. vision, but the team fight aspect isn't. I mean, other than great. the brew, it's the worst by any hero that's been picked more than four times at this event. Speaking of the brew. Yeah, the brew, uh, by the way, just in case you weren't aware right now, has currently been played 10 times in three days and has won one game. It's, really? It's sick against TV, though. Yeah. yeah. And if Liquid still end up deciding to take the Omni, it's also excellent against Omni Knight, which I think would have been Liquid's preferred pick here. Do you think Omni or... I was thinking maybe Dragon Knight. DK offlane? I thought about it, too. And they've run it against the Razor before. Yeah. And Mind Control doesn't seem to really care. He just pulls the lane. Yeah. They look excited about something here for the fifth. I just right? see Mind Control just punching his hands. Yeah. So I'm thinking something like like just getting their faces because just like some frontliner, some more disable, so mm. they can actually land the rest of their spells. Nothing cheesy. I like the Nyx ban by OG. I actually think that was a... Yeah, but... Omni or... Think, like disables catch kind of... Playing tight against... Oh, I would have said tight too, but isn't playing tight against Disruptor really annoying? You have to worry about his ult, I guess. I just feel like they need some... I guess they have tanky heroes, they just don't have very fast heroes. They need somebody that can like instantly engage the fight in a good way. Nothing really does that on their team right now. Like, I, f I feel like they're on the back foot a lot as soon as Tinker gets blinked. Offling? Death Prophet. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> My control is ready, dude. Look at him. Pugna. It's banned. Banned early on. Um, yeah. Right. Oh, the MC Nature's Prophet. Okay. Oh, he was well, excited. That's why, that's yeah, that's why he was, why he was excited. so excited. Yeah. It was McCall, so. Oh, man. Yeah, that's why he's got something he likes. And OG have had a very interesting draft. Uh, what have you made of that, Kevin? It's a good way to catch Tinker. Um, it's not, they don't have the most wave clear on OG's side, so I think it could potentially work here. Um, it can also go far and catch heroes and let their allies catch up. Okay. All right. Okay. Has it swayed you in any way? I think I like the OG draft better. Okay. Uh, it's pretty cool. All right. So Kevin for OG Blitz. Uh, I think this game I might go OG. I think uh, I think it's really close, and Liquid might be the better team, so they might end up winning anyways. But I think I like OG's draft. Okay. I think I like OG's draft, but I think I'm going to repeat the same thing I said last time that I think Liquid just on another level of outplay. So I'm going to go Liquid still. Yeah, we could just record those for you. And then just play them back each game if you want. It's uh, easier. There was a difference. We were two out of, <laughs> two out of three. Yeah. Uh, it is two out of three this time around again. Uh, let's bring a commentary team in for game number two. Uh, gents, interesting first game, obviously, but kind of fairly predictable. Does game two look the same way to you? Uh, Cap, you're the expert. What do you reckon? Uh, I think this game, I, I'll still kind of lead with the panel when I do like OG's lineup a little bit more. I think the last pick was a struggle, but hey. This is a mind control Furion. This is one of the, the hero player combinations yeah. that was so feared at the TI finals that they lit it out once and banned it for the rest of the series. Newbie could not handle it. I, I think that, you know, I'm leaning towards OG, but individual player performance on this hero, I, you know, mind control Furion. It really is. I mean, sort of before he even made it big, you know, people were like, mind control? Oh, he's the kid who plays the nature's proper, yeah. right? This was his hero. And you can see, you know, T.I. is in the bag and search, mind control, he sat down, he was so ready to play this, he was clapping his hands, it was smiles all around from mind control. Oh, he's he was so excited for this game, and I, when someone looks that happy about playing that hero, I'd be terrified if I was on the other side. Like, yeah. <laughs> mind control, there must have been a reason why I was so happy, he's played against some of these heroes, he knows the strengths of it. So, uh, for me, it's going to be all eyes on him to see how that sort of joy of playing the hero translates into this game. I remember that moment where Mind Control sniped the Courier at that first game for the TI Final. That is something to not be allowed to happen for this game for OG. So, anyways, we said the strengths for the, the Nature's Prophet. What is it about OG's lineup that feels strange? So, to me, the, the Tinker, it is a good game for the Tinker. And you have got that Tinker versus Terrorblade which we've seen being quite a, a difficult matchup for the Terrorblade to play into if the Tinker gets a good timing on his Ags before he's losing the racks, before those pushes come in. Yeah, the, the biggest thing is that they just don't have Tinker Hunters, right? They, they just really don't. Their supports aren't really good at being able to, to catch out the Tinker um, necessarily. They aren't heroes that really sneak around the map or give you vision or 
really get you like a big jump or anything like that. No one with pores really do that either. Uh, it's going to be up to Furion, it's up to Mind Control to be able to have a good enough game that he can threaten the Furion with his Orchid. Jab there at Miracle, but backup is there from the Bane. Creative Runes down there, but overall Liquid are the ones to get three. The poor Bounty. Nice little bit of a cash bonus for Liquid at the start of this game too. So the matchup here, OG is going to go for the aggro to try and put pressure on the Terror Blade, but it does mean we're going to have the Furion versus Brewmaster, which we saw Exotic Deer in that same matchup crush the landing phase. So with a Mind Control Furion, it's possible it does the same. But then again, it's an S4 Brewmaster. They are some quintessential hero player combinations here. Lane at the moment, OG just sort of mirroring the support movements of Liquid. GH and Kuro are down here. So are Fly and Jarax, both teams. Curing both Rezo and Miracle, that crucial farm. He actually being the ones being back a little bit here. One of the strengths of having this Elder Titan, getting that right click built up there. With the fact that you have these three heroes to pass it over that spirit. Look at that. GH and Kuro just fearless. Just as the two man, they're just willing to push into the three of OG because they feel like they've got the spirit damage. Bane is also one of the better heroes at trading out, especially since he still isn't leveled, but he could get Brain Sap. So they just create a lot of space for Miracle to actually get CS, which is supposed to be difficult in this try versus try scenario. Top lane, S4. Getting uh, hooked in on a bit by Mind Control, who's being afforded to, to play very aggressive in this top matchup. He's blown through almost all of his tangos already, and he's going to have to use his south soon. Pressure really beating up for S4 on this top lane. Mind control. Oh, the crazy snipe! Don't it. tell me! Is he gonna get it? Oh, oh he's okay. in the tree. A little off. A little off. Fortunately, with the free TP that you get at the starts, okay. no real punishment to be had. Ah, uh, Jarek's really smart. Look what he's doing right now. They unblocked their pull, which they need in the try versus try scenario. Jarek goes in, body blocks it again at the tomb mark. Lane, no tell. Amatuma manning up against one another. Who's going to win this exchange? The, bo the bots are helping out, but it's not enough. You ever Tumma played Frogger? <laughs> that was a game of Frogger right yeah, there. He was just dodging was. March of the Machine while Laser was still on him. First blood there for oh, that Viper in the mid lane. That's from a Tumma man. They're going to try and wrap around on him. Jerex is only level one, though. That's a level three Viper as well. Got the point in the Corrosive skin. And as much as the body blocks for Jarex are nice, not quite great enough to secure a kill. It's all for OG yet at this state. Yeah, and with our Marching Machines built, which is what No Tail should be going in this lane, um, but it also means you don't really have any kill power for these wraparounds. So Jarex is kind of given up on their try versus try. They yep. are just going to leave resolution here. At a certain point, if you're not getting kills in an aggro try lane, you need to abort because it just means you're losing out on experience. Yeah, and, and just as I say, all of the lanes really look at the struggle. Sure, the mid, the CS is alright, but they got the first. They got the first blood there. At the top lane, 17 for two, 15 for one. A little bit of an edge for mind control. And he's keeping S4 low. And the bottom lane, of course, as you say, it's just not working out for the Razor. The constant enfeeble, the pressure from the supports of Liquid, making sure that the space is there for Miracle to farm and Resolution. He can't use that strength as the Razor against the Terra Blade with the Static Link as he would wish to because of the way that Liquid. Have the CS matchup is pretty even, though, on both sides. We're seeing the Brewmaster do relatively fine against a Furion, even if he has a blow through lots of regen, even got himself a bottle. Um, and then we have the mid matchup where the Tinker's actually doing all right, but obviously he died earlier, giving up first. So this laning phase is relatively even. I do think it needs to go well for OG, though. Particularly shutting down Miracle, but it's just not happening. We've seen this a lot of times. Aggro duel and aggro trialing into Terra Blade. He's just so hard to put harassment damage on and threaten because of his super high armor start. He has the highest armor at the start of the game. Here. That point in reflection helping out each time a static link is attempted on but Superman. Getting very low in the mid lane though. And with their wraparound for Jerax, they are gonna look to try and dive in. Matuma Man though cutting him up through the trees. He's able to turn and take him down. The help of Kuro seeping in, and GH nice there as well, catch. no tail, he'll get punished as well. But Tumma Man surviving, salving back up to full health. As the play from OG just wasn't there in the mid lane, Jarek's trying to dive in. It was night time, but he absolutely overestimated his capabilities of the Night Stalker. Yeah, he was a level 1 nuke, and on top of that it's going to be dispelled by the fact he's got Corrosive Skin level 2 on the Viper. So, 
Even though he was on very low HP, you don't have the damage to actually threaten him. He could have healing south as well in between hits. Any of those options were available. For him. So he's going to get his level 6 well before No Tail has his level 5 even. That is going to kill the lane for No Tail. I think he's actually just got to go jungle at a certain point and maybe someone else takes over the mid lane, maybe the Disruptor. In fact, if he doesn't get out now, he may die to Mind Control's rap. Oh, he is Mind Control. TPing in, lays down the Sprout. TPs will be coming through to try and help out OG. They put the Viper Strike down onto No Tail. But Super Man just mans up, looks for the kill, is not phased at all by a level 3 TP in from Fly, who was also very low on mana. Fourth kill for Liquid, 2k lead. Building up very, very early. Mind Control will be found out on the retreat. He's trying to get back to the Shrine. Tails up. Oh, is that going to save him? It will. The sound between the hits buys him time. He turns with the Sprout, goes for the TP. He makes it away. Jerax can't even get the kill on Mind Control, retreating on minimal health there. That's, I mean, he if he's not still smiling and clapping, I'll be surprised. <laughs> And you've, you've heard it, Owen, right? Like, how many times have you heard somebody say a Night Stalker has to have a good first night? This is nothing more than just a, a sleepless night, really, for a Night Stalker, as he's not having that game start at all. No, certainly not in level two at six minutes in. And they managed to kill the Razor at bottom lane. Looks like they're even going for the kill on Fly. Beautiful body blocking here from my Control. The Stomp as well, buying time to surround him with those Treants. A sick kill for Liquid. They are holding nothing back in this game too. Straight from the off. S4 walks towards mid with that primal split. Maybe seeing if he could find an angle to get in onto the Viper. But it's a hard kill as it is and he'll just make the slow walk back up to top lane as he realizes nothing is there to be found. Bottom lane getting pressured in by Liquid. Resolution turning up. But this level 4 Razor, what does he do at this stage? He static links. It's immediately broken. S4 will TP in. He's got the split. Kuro just goes for the straight TP out and he'll make it. No way to stop it. And no time for S4 to pop the split and get the stun off. So they'll lose the tower. This is looking rough for OG. No Tail still isn't level 6. He's got his soul ring finally. He wants to be able to go back into the jungle and clear through some of his stacks. He sees mind control. Mind control being super aggressive is going to be forced away by Jarex's team. Jarex tries to go for the chase down. Get a few punches in. He was trying to get a position for the body block. S4 is there as well. Fly also. They're sending in mass numbers mid. Fly seeing if he can get some sort of control onto Matuma. But Matuma Man just goes in with the Viper Strike. The Astral Echo Stomp's there as well from GA. Setting up for a seventh kill for Liquid. It just doesn't stop. S4 is struggling to find a place in this game as well. Because he was having a fine time in his laning phase, but the other lanes were going poorly. So he tried to wrap on mid lane, tried to go for the Viper. Matumba Man was one step ahead of him, tried to go for the bottom lane. We had that Nightmare Kuro TP out play as well. He's read back into mid, still not finding a opportunity to go for that primal split. Like he needs to be able to utilize this to be able to get them some sort of kills because OG is just suffering so badly in their laning phase. They need to offset that somehow. Summer. Found himself uh, an Invis rune here. He was under the Ob's ward, so unlikely that Matuma could go for any sort of plays. Gonna hang around, maybe see if someone comes in momentarily. Hold off with the Viper Strike. The TP does come through, but OG more than wise to do so. Bottom lane, bit of an attempt on to Kuroki, but Kuroki holds back one with the Nightmare. Miracle moves in, and the massive Nature's Wrath bounce there. Perfectly done by Mind Control, getting a huge nuke. On top of the Night Stalker, will secure yet another kill for Liquid. And Mind Control can still position himself in front of this push from S4. Oh, and look at the build as well from yeah. Mind Control. The straight treads Meteor Hammer is what he wants. He is ready to style on these fools. As we've seen, you know, this item, it is, it is, it is great. It has got a lot of strong purposes. And in a game like this, it's going to make the push so strong, so quick from Liquid's lineup. And it's going to make the catch even more potent there. A sprout into Meteor Hammer. There's more than enough time for Mind Control to beat down any of these heroes. Yeah, it's going to be less effective if Tinker can actually get farm into level 2 rearm, and if he gets the Blink Dagger, then the Meteor Hammer takes such a long time to drop that that combination wouldn't give him solo kill potential against the Tinker, which is why I thought he would go Orchid. But it will give them this overwhelming push. Liquid is just going to push the tempo yeah. of this game against OG and say, we're going to go from winning the laning phase to taking all of your towers. And that's another way you can really threaten the Tinker. Even if you don't have Tinker Hunters, if you can limit all the outer map control before he gets bots and blink, 
then he has a hard time being able to find farm on the map. And if he does find farm, he's usually soaking all of it up, and he usually means the allies end up quite poor. S4, he's got that blink complete on the Brewmaster, and this is so important for OG that they make something happen here, because if they don't, this game is going to be in complete shambles. They have to get a pick with this. And look at Kuro, he's just sitting behind Matumba Man, knowing that it's probably target number one. S4 will get the split off, they've got the field down, they're looking towards Matumba Man, glimpse back onto Kuroki, Matumba Man's still alive for now, pops the one charges, trying to get out of there, there's the Sunder as well from Miracle, buying time for Matumba Man to get out, and OG, they just can't get the kill here, flies the one to four, the Sleep Stop comes out onto three, OG lose two, Miracle there with the pro play, coming in with the save, allowing them to man up and move in for more, they're gonna get three, they're gonna get four, no tail's gonna fall as well, it's 12 to zero, Liquid just aren't dying, and you can absolutely see why Mind Control was just in pure glee off the back of this draft. This is the reason why he was smiling and clapping his hands. He knew that they had this draft in the back. He knew that they had this play in the back. It's 11 minutes in. It's 12 to 0, 6k lead. And Liquid, they're pushing for more. The play the panel talked about was that series where Mind Control played the support Ventral Spirit. And they talked about how selfless that is. And it went into the philosophy of Liquid and how they play for each other. Miracles play there with the yeah. Sunder, that's playing for the rest of your team. The fact he's willing to sit behind his teammates there and use Sunder, like, hey, you normally you would see Terrorblades just off farming some side lanes, but. What? Timber. Getting gone on by Jarex, but he turns with the Viper Strike. Jarex is just dead. The Glimpse back, they do at the Static Storm, he'll try for the TP out, but with the clap, there we go. OG getting themselves the first kill on the board. They look towards Kuro, can they get themselves a second? They can't. Kuro's able to TP out of there. So OG, at least, there was a finally put a dent into the lineup of Liquid. That was 900 gold change for that one kill. Oh it's boy. It's a rich disruptor. Yeah, 650 gold for him. They desperately needed that on the Tinker. He still does not have boots to travel. He's still trying to just, you know, clear through this stack in the off lane jungle or the, its uh, own jungle area and still hasn't been able to do it because the pressure has just been mounting from Liquid this whole time. He also has to be the one to sit in front of these power pushes and get out those smarts of the machines, but isn't getting the opportunity to do both. Players to be next. I mean, GH, he's now got that level six. So in these team fights, which we've We've seen quite a few where it's turned into a full 5v5. The Earth Spitter going to be deadly, especially with the setup they've already got. The Sprout, the complete Meteor Hammer on Mind Control. All of these stuns sort of being thrown out in the midst of these fights that are going to be fatal for OG if they make a wrong step. 13 kills before the 13 minute mark for Liquid. They're three cores quite that bit ahead of the three cores of OG. At least a clear 1k between all three of them. You know what the really OP thing about Meteor Hammer, in my opinion, right now, Owen, is the fact that it's a 25 second cooldown. Yeah. So you could just clear every single wave as it comes up. So my control can effectively push two lanes all the time, if not all three. Trance on one side, Meteor Hammering another, and then the Wrath of Nature constantly. That much space creates opportunities for Liquid to be able to move around as like these three or four man units kind of hunting some of the heroes of OG and just getting the better positioning for themselves when it comes to pushes as well. That being said, the Boots Travel is finally up on the Tinker, so he can kind of offset some of that pressure on the side lanes and even put some pressure of his own as we're seeing what's happening here at this bottom lane. Absolutely. And as you said, this is one of the strengths. You know, the catch for the Tinker is not amazing. So no tell, he can get away with these pushes. Feel relatively safe doing so at the moment. Yeah, and they're continuing to, like, they don't even go for a Shadow Blade on the Viper or anything like that. Uh, Matu goes for Helmet Dominator and looking at Blade Mail and... So, again, they're focused more on the brute force push that's going to be happening later on to the game rather than trying to find the team to shut him down. They've already shut him down enough in the laning phase, and they'll continue to try and just keep the pace of the game so they can end it before it gets too big. Troll was pushing in. Some man there as well. Troll will back up. My man with that helmet of the dummy's got the... Uh... Up Golem ready to stun and catch out anyone that walks in his way. Doesn't want to hang around too long there over that side of the map. Top. Ah, oh, looking for Picos. Primal splits back up. And some sort of a very defensive at the moment, OG. 
things getting pushed and the way that they could have been able to force OG to play as safe as they are, sort of grouped up as four for the most part. It's very hard for OG to catch up on their cause with regards to the farm. This next daytime is going to be particularly potent for Liquid. They'll have Metamorphosis up about the same time the day comes up. Actually, they're hunting the Night Stalker right now. Just a little bit shy of catching it. Tell there as well with the deep push. Control. Down the Hamas, S4, the mid, trying to keep GH away from a bit of farm himself on that other side. And Kuro okay. setting up for the TP rotations. Let's see what he could do here. Uh, resolution straight away though, pops the other still. They've got the Static Storm as well, so Kuro will lose his life. We'll see if the rest of Liquid can clean up. The TP straight out being attempted by the Razor will be successful. Fly as well, will escape. Good disengage from OG. Meaning that none of their lives will be lost today. Yeah, smart by fly committing that static storm. They couldn't afford to get that nightmare fiend's grape combination where they're both held in place while TP rotations come in. So they actually get away scot free. Get a second kill on the board. I don't know, things are kind of slowing down in this game, and that's good for OG, I believe. Uh, they just need the dagger on the Tinker, everything. He can, and once he gets the blink, he can play the split push game a lot more aggressive. To him and Tumba Man. He's walked into the smoke. OG, they have to jump with the primal split, focusing the Viper. But Tumba Man's all on his own. The rest of Liquid will leave him be. He's relatively tanky, but they've got the chase down. But Tumba Man will fall. OG with the smoke getting one big kill. Maybe even more. They've got their eyes onto Kuroki. They have the vision for the glimpse back into the kinetic field. OG striking back here and will take two. They bait out the Tinker really well, but also my favorite thing of that fight was the fact that both Jerex and S4 looked for that extra kill immediately and found it with the uh, Kuro sitting in the back of the vein. Because, again, when you're ahead this much, even that, that extra support kill is actually worth so much to you. Not just in gold, but also experience. Map control you're going to get with those two heroes gone. Control. Looking over into the pit at the moment. Got that ward outside that was watching the whereabouts of S4. He's try for Roche. Meteor hammers all around by yeah. the way, Jerex is going. Oh my goodness. Mind control's in on Roche. This is quite an early Roche attempt. I mean with the Viper and the Terror Blade, they can certainly do it. Pulse the metamorphosis. I think they feel there's just no way that OG. Yeah. Without the Primal Split, that's pretty much their, their big team fight. Sure, there's yeah. a static storm, but they they really do need both tools, OG, to have a chance in these team fights. So liquid. Will get themselves this free Roshan GH outside of the pit, keeping OG's attentions elsewhere. Roche will be claimed the Aegis into the hands of Miracle. Deep across from Mike Troll, does find the Sprout onto Jerex. Jerex quickly bites his way out. Akura is there with the Fiend's Grip. Meteor Hammer a little bit too late as Jerex is able to walk away. Static Storm from Fly cancels the Fiend's Grip. The OG keep their distance, won't lose any of their own lives. Resolution continuing to try and split push down on that bottom lane. But the mid tier two is in trouble. Miracle able to use the rest of that metamorphosis to bring the tower down low. Can't quite finish it off for now, but they'll come back for that later. Quid will TP themselves out. My control straight down bottom to alleviate some of the pressure applied by Resolution. So they may have gotten Aegis, but at the same time, OG still have all their tier twos up by the time they've gotten Blink Dagger for this Tinker. Level 13 as well, so he's getting towards his max nukes. Considering the start of this game, Owen, I don't think this timing is too bad. Uh, OG have no. really yeah. stopped the bleeding in this game. And as we saw, you know, last game, they were certainly good at that uh, 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 position, where they did have sort of that net worth disadvantage, but they still showed us that they can slow down the pace of the game. The struggle was in last game being actually able to return it into their favor, gain that advantage once again. We'll see if they are able to do it this time round. So once again, we are seeing OG's ability to slow down the pace, the tempo. Liquid's trying to fall. Uh oh, they got S4. They do not have the Fiend's Grip, but they do have the Meteor Hate. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you have to right-click him! Oh no, Kuro didn't right-click through the Nightmare! And now Kuro, he may pay for this. He's sort of surrounded, they've got the March of the Machines down. Kuro is going to fall. As you said, one right-click from Kuro there would have sufficed. 
and now it may just get worse. They might be able to grab more heroes here. They've got the vision onto Miracle. Miracle getting Glimpse back into the field. Kuro's gonna buy back, but the Static Storm's down. They'll lose the Aegis on Miracle. Primal splits out. OG looking to take more out of this one. Fly will get surrounded by the Treants. They'll lose Fly, OG, but no tell keeping these marching mach machines built up. There will be the attempt from the Meteor Hammer from Mind Control. He'll go for the Sail Sprout and the TP out, but they have the Void to cancel that TP. Mind Control will fall. Oh, nice force. And they get more out of this one. The primal split will end. S4 getting turned towards by Matsuma Man. The haze is out. Matsuma Man can't get the hits in. The blink out will be there. No tail. Does get surrounded though. He'll get one more march out, but will be taken down. GH still with his eyes onto Jerax. Jerax with his eyes back towards GH. Looking for the chase around GH. Trying for the Dukes. Keeping himself hidden in the trees. Jerax will be aware of his position, but looks like Jerax is scared. He knows that there's more coming in from Liquid. Kuro finds the nightmare. GH will be allowed to close the gap with the stomp. They have got Matsuma Man here as well to make sure that they've got just the right amount of damage to finish off Jerax as Jerax will fall amongst the tree line. So still Liquid, they do come out slightly on top. They manage to get a tier 2, but as we said, it ends up being a little scrappy for them just because they didn't get that quick kill at the start. Yeah, a couple of questionable uh, positionings there from Big Daddy No Tail. The first time he comes in, he actually puts himself in the trees and has to run back to TP away, and then obviously TP's back in gets caught. As a result, they may just end up losing a lane of racks now. Yeah, seems despite that little bit of a blunder from Kuro, it really doesn't matter here as this top racks are in trouble. The tier three gets taken down. Liquid with the pipe complete continues to push on, focusing the barracks. Can OG hold this back? They've lost S4. He's down for 40 seconds. Does have buyback, but he doesn't have the primal split. So Liquid, they'll be allowed to take that tier three, take the melee racks. The range racks falling low as well, but Liquid. Now back off, there's a glimpse onto Miracle, but oh, the Manta-style dodge. Dodging that glimpse, the stomps out onto Sue Liquid. They're ready to go back in onto OG. They'll find Fly. Jerax held down on the side by the Fiend script from Kuro. There's three falling on OG. The Rex are gone. The 10k lead continues to grow. 19 to 6, 22 minutes in. Liquid, as we said, they're going to have to pull off a lot more mistakes than that. For, uh, to allow OG to get back in this one as they are just so far ahead right now. Yeah, the timing, Owen, here that we were looking for for OG was to get the Aghanim Scepter before your high ground yes. is pierced by Liquid. Well, that Aghanim Scepter is so far away for the Tinker and they've already lost one lane of rack. So Liquid is free for probably next five, maybe even ten minutes to slowly but surely take those other two lanes and... I just don't see a way for OG to be able to get fast gold for Big Daddy No Tail while simultaneously stopping the next upcoming pushes of Uplink. Suda's Metamorphosis is back up. I back mean, they've got guns. BKB coming in. Maybe they'll wait for that for Miracle just because they don't have the Aegis anymore. But when that's up, force it. Hood as well picked up for Kura. Make sure that he's. Even more safe to sort of frontline this go for the Fiend script players in the midst of the fights. We saw already the pipe from Mind Control helping out massively on those sort of high ground sieges into the Tinker spam. 11k lead, double damage down bottom. Yeah, two on that they will. They'll secure that for Matsuma Man to grab, pick up. They have so many good answers for the Tinker spam. When it does come up, even if he did have Aghanim Scepter right now, they have Mech and Pipe for, for Mind Control. They're going to have a BKB for Miracle when he does want to go high ground and just right-click those buildings. Uh, like, the Viper is super tanky as well. He's got a BKB of his own to be able to force things. I wouldn't even be surprised if Kuro at one point in time picks up a thing. Yeah, camping sort of the two instances, one after another be incredibly strong. A six game win streak on the line here for uh, No Tail. This game, once again, really is OG up against everything. Up against the world as it seemed with Liquid. Montreal just waltzing in. And yeah, with one lane of rags gone, and especially with a Fury on your team, you're always going to lose your backdoor protection yeah. to some of these pushes, and that leaves open. Chip away at the tier threes. Yeah, that's your BKB you talked about being finished on Miracle. So now, very little fear when it comes to trying to break the high ground if you're Liquid. The BKB is pretty much making these two cores invincible against OG's lineup. Yeah, take that second shrine. Take the tier two at bottom. You know OG is unlikely to find it. They're probably 
pretty skittish about getting into any engagements against Liquid when they're up 11k like this. Oh, no tail. He's blinked into mind control here. Mind control going for the meteor hammer. Will be there to cancel the stun. Hold no tail in place. He goes for the rearm. Does manage to get the blink off. So should escape, and he will do so. Mind control nearly threatening the life of a tinker on his own as this nature's prophet. Being able to force no tail back to base will mean that mind control and get that bottom lane pushed around. And look, we can look for that third and final tier two. Yeah, normally it's uh, like we talk about when a Furion game, can you deal with the like, Furion split push? Here it's actually the Furion's going to be dealing very well with Tinker split push, addressing that issue. He pushes back in the way. Team can maintain an aggressive front on OG just outside of their base, making sure that pretty much no one feels comfortable on the side of OG of pushing themselves out and getting that greedy farm. Only no tail he can pick up CS and maybe resolution when it comes to any CS that's right outside of his base. There we go. Another outer tower taken by Liquid. No chance for OG to put a stop to the The Earth Split are getting thrown into the base. We'll flip onto a couple of them. Now Summer Man as well. Looking to go in. They've got the Fiend script onto Jax. Jax is just dead. A miracle on the back lines. He's popping the, uh, the Metamorphosis, and he's just shoving into OG. Resolution does get the link off, but Miracle just walks in and kills off the Tinker. The Sunder keeping Miracle alive. Has had a lot of his right click soaked up, but that's two dead on OG. No Tail has to buy back for this defense. As now, this second lane of tier threes and racks in trouble. Matuma Man does get glimpsed back, pops the BKB. S4 jumps in with the primal split, manages to get it off. But the pipe's already out for Liquid. They just turn, they're beating down into these Brulings, ripping S4 apart. As OG, it just seems like they don't quite have the damage to fight into this. That's two Brulings nearly down. They've got the Sprout, Resolution's stuck, he does force out of it, Fly gets sent to sleep, he manages to get the Static Storm down onto 3, S4 comes back in with the clap, but outside of it all, Miracle's just forcing them back, punching into them, OG just can't finish off these kills, the Meteor Hammer gets thrown down onto S4, S4's gone for 50 seconds, Liquid have taken the Tier 3, they'll look to move onto the Barracks, they'll back off a little bit from the March Spam, as OG managing to temporarily hold them off, if you can't win a fight like with that Static Storm, with that Kinetic Field Static Storm combination that Fly pretty much got all by himself, you can't win the fight, you can't even do enough to force Liquid outside of your base and keep S4 from dying, you're out of ammo at that point in time. You won't have Static Storm for the next push. You're going to have another Metamorphosis BKB push this time around. There's no Tier 3, so the racks are going to get gobbled up super quickly. And I think uh, there was that Ling uh, Liquid having a bit of a mango break. I think a couple of those were swallowed, <laughs> getting everyone back up to full mana, meaning that they could go straight back in. The mangoes are in them. Liquid's ready to go back in with the push. Rezo tries for the static link, gets broken straight away as the Nightmare holds him back. Viper strike down onto Rezo. He's able to force back, but this is just forcing himself away from the bigger issue. The fact they're losing the racks. No Tail gets caught on the sideline. That's the Tinker down for 68 seconds. BKB's pop from Miracle as he just heads in, forces OG all the way back to base. Jerex will be able to flap himself into the fountain, but a second set of racks are gone. Liquid moves towards the middle. They can go for the racks. They can go for the tier four. They can go for the game because at 28 minutes, a 20k gold lead, and on the verge of having mega creeps, this game looks irrecoverable for OG. Absolutely. 40 seconds, and he was just about to pick up an ad in Scepter 2. And here we go again. I mean, it's a nice static storm onto a couple of heroes, but where is the follow-up? They've lost resolution. He's gone for 50. He does not have buyback. Nobody on Liquid is dying. They just take no damage. They just stand their ground. There's the GG. Good luck called by Fly. This game is over. This series absolutely over. No question about it. Game one looked pretty one-sided. Game two looked like OG never had a hope at all in this game. And it's a similar storyline for both, which is we had one big intelligence core who just lacked the damage to be able to really threaten the whole entire liquid 